Away we go. Okay, over to you, Mark. All right, thank you. Um, whatever you do, do not wait uh, and hold the questions back to later. Um, simply ask a question whenever you want, all right? Um, because a lot of stuff can be lost within that. Um, I've got a number of flies to, to show you for both river and lake. Um, and um, I've got, uh, so if there's anything that you say, oh, no, we've seen all that. I don't want to see it. Then let me know. Uh, don't laugh at my wife's glasses. Um, I'm going to go on to... <laughs> I can't see a damn thing with them other than my voice. Right. Can you see my... It's not coming through on the other no. video now. No, no you're not... in space. It's a black, uh, black hole at the minute. Yeah, you're going blank. Oh, hang on. Must be your wife's glasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good impression of a black cat in a, in a, in a coal mine. Mm. Sure, my wife has black. Yep. Right there we go. There we go. There hey, you go. see. Yep. There we go. Don't come the slippery eel with me, two sheds. We're there. <laughs> right. The first fly I'm going to tie is actually because I I did know I I do know <clears throat> these things that somebody asked me to uh, tie something green. Okay. Because it is the the wonderful evening of uh, where every Irishman I would think is unconscious by now of Paddy's day um, so I'm actually going to tie a red arse green Peter but I do it I want, me being me I'm going to tie it the way that I tie it so um, all the materials and whatnot I'll, I'll, I'll put onto the website or onto the Facebook page or the WhatsApp page later together with photos but um I'm using, I, I, and I, I've been using these hooks for, because uh, they're barbless, and I only ever fish with barbless now. Uh, and I've fished with this at Cloedog, uh, and it, it can fish its head off. It really can. Um, I mainly do dry fly fishing, but I, I'm using these hooks, uh, which is the RX FW561 traditional nymph hook, and this is in a size 12 which for those of you that uh, need to know are within competition limits. So it fits into the gauge. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about, very early on in my tying career, I was influenced by uh, a book I read called uh, by D.W. Dunn called um, Sunshine and the Dry Fly. And at the time, I was doing a, a lot of competition fishing. Uh, and he, he the, bit, the book was written in the, the 30s. Uh, and he used to take, he used to fish on all the chalk streams. But what he actually did was he used to take all his hooks soak them in caustic soda so it took all the japan japan and japan off it or the bronzing off it or the bluing off it uh, depending how they were treated on the make and he would then um paint them white with enamel paint now i actually started doing that and i just sand it down a bit and paint the hook shank white um, and like I said I was I was utilizing it when I was doing a lot of competition fishing and I actually fished flies two dry flies one which had a white hook shank and one which didn't which was tied with black thread and nine times out of ten they took the one with a white hook shank so I changed them and on the backdropper was the one with the white hook shank, and and they they took that as well. Now I 
Paper is always in the pudding, isn't it? Eating the pudding. Uh, and so without painting them was a real pain in the backside. But what I learned to do was, was that all the hooks, all the flies that I tied now, I always tie with white silk. Um, I don't care what it is, salmon flies, anything, I tie with white silk. And then if I need to dye the hair, I use a dye pen to colour the silk where I need it to be done. And it, it's amazing that once the fly is wet, the amount of translucence you get from that fly, no matter what material that you're using. Now, it may be, having said that, there's always um, things that will go against that rule. And one of those things is, is quite simply, is that if you're putting uh, some material on there, that you actually want to utilize at a later date uh, to have an effect on the actual color of. Camera's about to go off, Mark. Camera's about yeah. to go off. Oh, oh, no, it's not. Just testing. Go, oh, thank you for that. You got it. Say so it was right over your upside. Yeah. He's making sure we're awake. <laughs> well, it, it, there is that. I've, wait till the burglar comes through the back window. Don't forget, I live in Wales. <laughs> right. So, um, I've always used white. Now, there's times where I use black, and I'll use something like Mirage, because that will give a green hue to the to the Mirage. Sometimes I use a fluorescent red and orange, and, and I'm sure Tim will agree with me with this. It changes the whole color concept of, of the material that's on top. Um, so it's something for you to play with. Now, uh, I'm doing this in touch and turns, and I'm just going to go up to the point because these are nymphunks, so they tend to be a little bit longer, but I've got no issue with that whatsoever. Um, and I'm tying this, the rib, with gold wire. I have got no objection if you want to use anything else. Um, the traditional was always tied with gold wire. And one of the techniques I'm doing there is just bringing the wire underneath, if I do it again, it seems it jumped out, underneath this material, then I've got control of the material. That looks a sore th thumb, Mark. Sorry? That looks a sore thumb. It is. Looks like oh. a blind cobbler's thumb. Don't, don't, don't ask how it happened. <laughs> I, I, I lost that. me nail and everything, so I'm just <laughs> pleased. I'm, I've got no feeling in my right hand. And no sense in my head, really. Could you, wouldn't you, Todd, yeah? <laughs> it, it wouldn't have mattered there either, mate. But don't forget, <laughs> I, I've got, I'm in wheels here. You can't see. <laughs> I've got my own, mo my own motor. So I'm bringing up. What I should point out straight away right at the beginning was I've left that gap there at the head for the head hackle and the wing. Um, quite simply, then... Again, I'm a little bit different in that the traditional red arse is normally done with that sort of red seals fur, right? quite bright orangey red. Um, I, if I've got a tail, I want to see it. So I'm using that, which is almost like a glow bright five, number five more than anything, but once, once it's in there, um, it blends in beautifully. And this is seals fur. Now, who has problems with dubbing? Hey. Right. The simple thing with dubbing, no matter what you're doing, Right, and uh, I'm just, I'll come out a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing with, with, with my fingers. Right, is that the dubbing is, I'm putting it on <clears throat> and I lay it on with my finger and hold it with my forefinger and wow. turn my thumb to the right. That badly injured, stomped to death thumb is there. And I tighten that up as much as I can. I've probably got too much on there now. 
So I can rip that off. And then the second thing I do is I push it up to the point, shorten my working thread, and just do one turn, and then I can really tighten it up. All right, so every time I turn, I now tighten up. Because what that does is it gives me, an, uh, and the reason why I'll put plenty on here is, it's not because I think it's such a wonderful color, but I'm going to brush it out later anyway. That's enough. So I can bring it through to that point there. And the green is normally what they call an apple green. And I actually prefer to use this sort of olive. Can you see the colors on that all right? Yeah. Oh. You zoom back in, Mark? Yeah, I can do, not a problem. Is that focused up? Not quite. Uh, out, no. Back out. Perfect. Yeah. It's ever so technical this stuff, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> the test. Oh, Gareth's just doing mine, Mark. <laughs> Is he? Oh, he's just sorting me, lap, my iPad and uh, my laptop and cameras out. He's, he's coming up to visit me Saturday. Is he? Yeah. He's probably had enough by then. He's, I've been on all week with him. He's a good lad, isn't he? Yeah. Got a heart of gold. He has to be fair, yeah. I've told him, though, he's got to start time more than three patterns, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, so again, put that on, tighten it up. <clears throat> And it's surprising how this will eat the seals for the making of this fly. Mark, you've got to tell us how you've done that thumb. Um, I'm in a wheelchair and I caught my thumb on the side of my wheelchair oh. and it just pulled the nail off. <laughs> it looks like I've chewed it to death, doesn't it? But it does. I, I haven't, honest. I chewed the other hand. <laughs> well, Iron Sword never did that, did he? <laughs> Sorry? Iron Sword never did that, did he? No, but he didn't move about much, did he? He had, a fella, he had some poor fella pushing him about everywhere. He had a pusher. Right, so the body hackle I'm using is I'm, I'm using this lower grade, quite webby, um, rusty blue done. Um, you can see, I don't know if I, if I drop that and you can actually see the freckles in it. Yeah. Um, this is one of the favourite capes if you can get hold of. And this is why really you need to buy your capes by looking at them. And I always tie these hackles in exactly the same way as I would with uh, a normal dry fly hackle. All right. A lot of people tie, tie them in uh, flat and along the one side, but I've tied that in with a figure of eight. And then all I've got to do to help me layer that, but to make sure that is secure and is not going to pull out, I can bring the silk over that, which is going to have the color hackle on it. Yeah. Right. I, I, and it's just a simple thing to do 
which might save you some heartache later on. All right, so I've just got rid of the, the waste there. Take hold of my hackle pliers. My favorite hackle pliers, my wife was able to break. <laughs> you can't believe it. She, it was on this. Uh, and I've got my Waldron voice across the back of me, right, which I, I tend to tie classicals on. And she thought, oh, that's in the way. I'll push that. So she pushed that with the the, the long shank of the um, hackle plier down. Ping! So I walk in, and there's two bits on the floor. <coughs> there's been denial ever since. <laughs> right, so I've done one full turn. And it depends how thick you want this hackle. And I'm not worried at all about um, the hackle being too long. As long as it's relatively proportionate. And I bring Sorry, it right to the back. Power's going back off again. Go again. There we go. Well I'll hold this and I'm going to rewind this on right the same way as I wound the hackle on. So where I've gone forward with the hackle, I'm now going forward with my ribbing. And the reason for that is is because I'm going in the, the opposite way, so it's actually going to lock it quite nicely. Now, something that I always do when I lock off, I do two turns on the front, pull the material back, and I always do two turns on the front of the material that I've just tied in. And I call the, 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 the it's really called um, locking, the locking turns. So, so your material might be there and it's trapped in between two other pieces of thread. Uh, never ever use on the pain of death scissors unless you get a wire like I've got that won't ever break. <laughs> Tim loves using scissors on wire, don't you, Tim? 13 amp, that is. <laughs> I'm always cutting wire with my <laughs> Thank God for that. I didn't think that was going to start then. So I take this here and snap it off, right? And it'll snap off right against the thread. Now, the, the one thing I'm going to do now before I go further is just brush out that seal's fur. And it will change the hue of the fly completely. What's well. the brush you're using, Mark? Hey, What's the brush you're using? This was a, a gift that I had at Christmas. Um, and this is the first time I've used it. It's the... Um, Michael Froding one. Now, normally you would put uh, a hen hackle. I pulled that out a bit there, so I'm going to take that off there. Right. I'm not cutting them, just pushing. Right. Normally you would put a hen hackle or a gain of um, freckled or, or rusty blue done. Well, I'm not because it's Paddy's night. But I've actually fished with this. Um, I'm actually going to give it something different. It's a, a green dyed partridge apple. which are tying on the tip.
with the concave part of the feather pointing in. And I like to pull that in just a, a tad. So I've got a good grip of it. Take the tip back, turn it over. Take my hackle pliers. Can you see all this clearly enough? Yeah, yeah, it's very good. And I dub it back. Stuff. You can see all the mistakes, I hope. Power. Camera's going again. Oh, for God's sake. Look at that then. See? I said you could watch all the mistakes. Easy done. It is by me. Everybody's done it. <laughs> well, I, 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 what you'll see is I've done a pile of videos over the years on the Gwent Angling Society site. Uh, and I know a lot of people turn around and say, Oh, you make an awful lot. Why do you leave the mistakes in the film? I said, Well, it's fly time for God's sake. I don't expect the the fly police to come through the window, you know, yeah. with the with their stun grenade saying, aha, <laughs> not the comfy chair. Um, Trump me age there now, but I mean, by, by doing it this way, um, it shows you, because I think there's more to learn from how to recover it. That's twisted. Sorry. There's a button to press there to stop that happening all the time. You know that, don't you? There we go. And it just anchors that down quite nicely. Mm, nice. And gives that flow. I'm pushing the thread out of the way just to cut that out. And then I'm going to lay the bed then for the wing. Um, I always put in two wings. I put an under wing in and an over wing. Um, a lot of people tell me what a waste of time that is. But as you can see there, I've taken my Sharpie, my black Sharpie, and I've now got black tying thread. Now, I'm just using, um, and some. I'll, I'll just come out a bit just so you can see. I take the secondaries out and I put them in two bags, one mark right and one mark left. All right, it saves you having 27 wings for probably about four feathers on each wing, left and right, and I can guarantee you'll take them out, snap yeah. them off, rip half the fibres off. If you do it in one go, uh, it's done and dusted. And having said that, I took this out of out of a box which had about 40 wings in. <laughs> Is that gone there? Uh... No, it's gone seeing you it's a bit to the left. Uh, no. Yep. Sorry, it takes time for it to adjust. No, I don't necessarily want to. So I'm tightening that up. So I'm going to take two slits, one from the right, one from the left. I'm not particularly bothered. Uh, and all I'm doing is cutting them off camera. 
Because do you, do you want me to see me cut them or not? Just married a couple. Yes, okay. Right. This is the first wing. And I'm not really... Fly fisherman's glue, bit of spittle, on my finger, we'll hold that. Bit of spittle on the other finger, we'll hold that piece. So what I'm doing is I'm putting them together and I want those points to match. And then I'm putting them over the fly. I don't mind these being a little shorter, but then I pinch. So I lay it so the center of the, fly, the, the wing or the two wing slips goes directly over the center of the body. Yeah. I'm just going to tighten this up again. <clears throat> All right, and I'm doing pinch and loop. And then just doing the one, and then I draw up. All right. By doing it this way, and then I'll do one, two for security, and another one just to see how it is. All right. And I can check. You can you see down the center how level that is? Yeah. Yeah. Now, most people will be happy with that. Um, I like a bit more. I've got to be honest. And I'm just going to bring that in a bit more to create the bed for the next fly. There you go. And that is just the underwing. So I'll take my scissors. And nip off the waist. Take my silk round in front of that waist just to lock it all in. Now, I'm going to pull this back a bit so you can actually see how I cut them. Right, so this is the right hand feather. The most important thing is that you can keep them even. And place that down. Then take the left hand feather. That one's getting a bit wary, so he's up. He's off on his holidays. <clears throat> I can show you another technique where you actually pull it out like that slightly and then rip it away. All right. Um, it doesn't affect all the banding, but you're then left with all this gubbins on the bottom, which you might have to get rid of. You still have to trim it. Yeah. Well, I do, but... Just because I don't like the mess with it, you know. Yeah. Longest side into the centre. Longest side into the centre. Now they're up to, as you can see as I'm doing that, they're upside down. Can you see that? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right, So, because when I put it on then, they'll be level. Now, I'm, I'm just marrying the base of this one a bit. And I'm going to take some out of the other one. Oh, that bit's moved. Just marrying back together, all tickety boot. Just need to take two or three fibers off that left hand.
Put this over and slightly longer. Push down with your forefingers and then they're on the side. So between thumb and forefinger, I'm pushing them down and they're on the side. Don't ask me to show that again, for God's sake. <laughs> Lift up, pinch and loop. Draw. No, that didn't go. I saw it slip. Pinch, loop, down, and then lift up and draw up. Okay. Down, up, and down. And you can see now, if I bring that in a bit closer, need to go back out a bit, don't I? Yeah. What I've now got is a nice wing that is roof shaped. Because don't forget, can you see that all right? Because I can't yeah. see on. A bit blurred, but I can see it. It's out of focus, Matt. That's it. There you go. Right, right, right. So if I turn it upside down, what you've got is you've got that perfect roof yeah. on top of the fly, right, in line with it. So it's not going to spin. I take that one more turn there. Get rid of the waste. Get rid of the waste. And build up your head. And I like a big bounce on these. Um, and I think if you've got a big head, it's part of the target. There have been occasions when I've then changed this fly again and actually, I'm just tightening it up. With this gel spun, you've got to keep tightening it all the time. You can then, if you want, tie that. Look at that. Right? Look at come the revolution. I shall come back as a right. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I shall come back as a hem pheasant wing just to irritate tires. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Five, bring it off, take it off. And just simply um, a bit of loose um, glue. which holds it up, and then I'll varnish that again once it dries. But that is, quite simply, the green arsed, Peter, with a... The red arse. Green hackle, partridge hackle. <laughs> with, with, with red arse, sorry. <laughs> I'm, glad some, I'm glad somebody's is spotted these deliberate mistakes. <laughs> Right. I would have no, I would have that as on the top dropper. Right. Or if I, there's a bit of a wave and I'm lock style fishing, mm -hmm. I would have it on the middle dropper with a muddler on the top. Okay. Right. So because that will fish just underneath the water. Yeah. The muddler will cause a wake on top of the water. And then below that, I might have something. Uh, with less dressing on it again. So it could be uh, a similar fly or a Katie McLaren without so much hackle. Okay. All right. Uh, I, and um, I, I tend to fish traditional flies like this, short lining. 
Do you understand what I mean by short lining? No, go on. Uh, uh, right. Short lining is an old technique which has been lost and used to be one of the techniques that the Welsh team used to use regularly. And all it means is it was normally fished with a wet cell two and you would have enough line, which would be the length of the rod, right? So that would be your, your fly line, followed by the same length with three flies on it. And sometimes you'd have a double on the point. Uh, I, 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 oh, see that? I saw that then. Oh, well done. I, I remember once being on Brennig, and we shouldn't have been on the water, really. It was a competition, and the waves were up above our eye level, right? Oh, yeah. So when you were in the trough, you got the waves level with or above your head. Wow. Yeah. The only way you could fish was short lining, and we were short lining and dabbling the flies through, and fish were coming out of the wave and taking the flies. Oh, yeah. It, it, was, it was unbelievable. Uh, but it literally is. If I just um, come back to you. Oh, hello. What's up there? What have I done? Oh, don't like it. Don't you back with us. Hang on. Mr. Murder in. Ah, there right. he is. Because I'm waving my hands and whatnot. Right. All you're doing is, is doubling it back and shaking your hand. If you've got Parkinson's, you do this beautifully. Right. <laughs> Bringing it up, up through right up and you, your flies will be there and if you hook a fish with your rod right back all you do is roll cast forward and that will hook the fish right and it's, it's so important why people understand how the, why, how the roll cast works because it's a cast in its own right so you're out bringing it out and then you fan cast it out in front of you and it it isn't it isn't without its difficulties because it's exhausting but your flies will be in the water probably six times longer than they are if you're pulling, casting a long line and pulling flies. Because you think the only time the flies out of the water is when you're going forward. Uh, and I showed a, a friend of mine the technique at um, Cloedog last year. And he said, there's a fish following that. I said, no, there's three fish following it. Uh, double, 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 and all three fish went for the same fly, which was the muddler. Um, and, and it makes them competitive because they think it's getting away from them. So it, it, it's well worth doing. Any questions on that? Everybody happy? Yeah. How can you tell there's three fish following? Educate me. Right. You see the change in the ripples. You will okay. actually see the fish because don't forget, if you're only fishing 18 foot a lot or... or 20 foot of line, depending on the length of your rod, you can see what's happening. Okay. And you're only fishing the first top six inches. Right. Um, I, I know exactly what you mean because um, I was really taught lock styling by a guy called Tony Hopkins. He was the only man that I know that was fishing course and game in the as a full disabled angler and course and game as a full abled angler right right he, he, he had terrible problems with strokes but this man could catch fish in a puddle mm -hmm. uh and one of the first occasions i went out with him he fished with three bear hooks <laughs> right was a fishing and he caught fish. In fact, he caught more fish than I did with dress hooks. Bloody hell. Right. And he, two things he taught me that day was speed of retrieve. The foot, you've got to fish it at the speed that the fish want to see it. Yeah. And you've got to put it in front of their faces so it's depth. Yeah. Uh, and that's all he was doing. Okay. Uh, uh, but it, it is, it, it, it's about, um, presentation and speed of retrieve okay educate I'll, me I'll, again I'll, then well no. i'll ask i'll ask you yeah. all this all yeah. all a question how many of you watch beyond your fly line when no, you're fishing really. no not really no. yeah so how do you know whether there's a fish following or not 
Well, exactly. Right, and, and I'm talking mainly reservoir or lake yeah. fishing or still yeah. water fishing. Yeah. So you should you should be watching from your fly line or from where you think well you should know where your top dropper is. Yeah. Right. To the areas where your flies are. Right. So I, I, as you're bringing it in, because sometimes I, ha I mean I, it's something that you get adapted with um, yeah. competition fishing, I suppose. But I could see, I would know when fish were moving. And if you was in charge of the boat, you'd say, oh, I'm just going to move the boat a bit, right? Because you could see fish moving 30, 40, 50 uh, yards ahead of you, right? So you wanted to be in the wind lane and the line. Where are they going to be? Okay. That they were feeding down. Right. And men, and that, that's one reason why they, they have this two-hour rule with, the the boat engine right uh and i, I can guarantee you, once you understand that you might just see a flicker in the ripple and that don't ever assume oh that's just the wind or that is just a coarse fish or um i mean on the river the tiniest dimple i had a guy uh on the opposite bank at Mardi when I was fishing Team O one evening. And he said, why are you fishing for those dates? Because he, I was fishing across the river to where the platform was on the far side. And I said, what dates? He said, well, those tiny dimples. He said, are dates? I said, oh, are they? And I took four trout in four casts. Uh, smallest was a pound and a quarter, and the biggest was two and a half pound. Mm. And I said, these are ever so big days, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> and he said, he said, well, you've just opened my eyes there. And I said, you don't know what fish it is mm -hmm. until you've caught it. Yeah. You know, and, and you've got to present your fly in the right way and have the right fly on. Okay. Um, educate me with speed now. And you're talking about speed of your retrieve. How can, what determines that? Okay. Tell me. When you're fishing the lake, yeah, right. Um, uh, I take you stood on the bank. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Explain to me yeah. what your system is. Right. Okay. Line goes out. Uh, I then count normally for about twenty seconds. Let it get down a little bit, and I then retrieve a slow, twitchy retrieve. One, two, three. Then a long pull. Stop for a little while. One, two, three let for a while, long pull, and then carry on like that until it's ready to recast. Right. And then you crash out and do exactly the same again. Yeah, yeah. And then again. Yeah. And then again. Absolutely. And then again. Yeah, I'm obviously doing something And then something again. Wrong. And then you wonder, why am I catching fish? That's what I'm asking you. Right. <laughs> the way I do it is, yeah. right, I f from the bank I will fan cast. Yes, do that, yeah. Right, right. But initially, I'll cast out in front of me, right? And the first thing I'll do, cast out, as soon as the flies hit the, hit, hit the water, one strip. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, it's ringing the dinner bell. Right. right? And they may come up and attack your flies straight away. Right. Then, like you, I think in threes, but I go one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Okay. And I work out the way they want it. Right. Now, I might do, but I will not do the same retrieve all the time. Right. Law of averages says you're going to catch something, but what you're trying to, you're fly fishing. So your bait is a fly. Yeah. So what you're hoping to do is encourage the fish to take your fly as food. Yeah. So first of all, you've got to consider what they're feeding on. And I know a lot of them are stockies, yeah. but stockies soon get wise enough pretty quickly, right? They only need to be caught once or twice, and then yeah. they become very wary. Yeah. Um, I... I <laughs> A very good friend of mine he, who's in Nottingham, who, who's, who's a guide and teacher as well, 
he said, I'm having a real problem, he said, with catching all these fish. And, and there's a pattern I'm going to tie later on, which will help you with this, right? Okay. Uh, and I said, right, what are the conditions? He said, oh, flat calm. He said, but there's fish dimpling everywhere. And I said, right, okay. And I said, you're cast, everybody's casting towards these dimpling fish, either in front of them and stripping like buggery. I said, yeah. I said, then you're all using, I would say, size 14 flies. Oh, he said, sometimes I'll go down to 16, right? I said, right, biggest fly you want to fish is an 18. Ooh. I would suggest you go down to a 22. Oh, okay. Because they're taking tiny midge. Their, their feeding pattern or the way they're feeding means they're swimming around and they're looking for specific things. They're looking for that trigger, right? Now, one day you might go there and, and put a fly on and bang, 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 because you've hit it right. Yeah. But you've then got to analyze why you've hit it right. Right. Exactly. As much if you've got to analyze why you've hit it wrong. Exactly. Yeah. And there's more to learn from a poor day's fishing than there is from a great day's fishing. Yeah. But both should be analyzed. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, it sounds like uh, I'm being a bit of a clever dick here, but I'm not. Uh, the uh, point is, is you've got to think about what's happening and why it's happening. Uh -huh. And once you do that, you'll start to catch fish. Okay. Thank you. That, 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 that I'll tell you what, yeah, that, I'll tell you what, that helped big time. Thank you very much indeed, yeah. Mark, Mark, Peter, for you, the world, you know that. And you as well, darling. <laughs> Can't let you are. <laughs> uh, so, so, oh, right. so, the next pattern I'm going to tie is, uh, we discussed it early in the evening, is this pattern called the My Snowshoe Emerger. It's not okay. Gareth. <laughs> Gareth developed his. Having seen mine, I hasten to add. Okay. Um, it is, it's simple. Um, and the materials are easily available. Um, sorry, I'm just moving one lot out of the way. Now, I, I'm going to leave the big sign on for a minute. Okay. Uh, so you can see some of the materials. Um, do any know any of you know somebody who goes ferreting? No. All right. One of the best pieces of material you can get hold of is this. Right, and this, and I'll show it clearer. Uh, is a hair, uh, a rabbit's mask and it's like a softer hair's ear but where it is you cut from between the eyes and down to the nose it's a triangular bit right um, and it is absolutely superb as a dubbing and that's what goes into the thorax of this fly the other bit that I use is this which is fine copper and gold tinsel okay. um and i'm just going to take a piece of this off um there is a specific reason because i tried many many different things some of the things work but not consistently um and i i it, for me what i was looking for was a was a pattern that worked and th this is a pattern for rivers uh and and um uh robert smith who wrote the book on uh fishing welsh border streams mm -hmm. um he took he's got this pattern in his actual uh in his book because he heard about it and then i gave him some and he said can i use it please now what I'm showing you now are snowshoe rabbit, right? The, these are the feet, right? And what you need to do is take hold of the toes. And I've got them in white. I've got them in like uh, olive. Hello. But most importantly for this, 
I've got them in done color, and I'll I'll show this up as a uh, as we start the fly. You you can now use um, any suitable bent hook really. Um, and if I go back to Oh, better turn yourself on again, Anna. <laughs> we got the blank screen again. Oh no, I'm Mark, Mark calling Orson. Come in, Orson. That no. oh, did that say pray? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there you go. See, don't come the slippery eel with me, two sheds. Yeah. Right. So if I um, that's it. All right. Right. Let me move this stuff out of the way because it sets it all off. Right. Um, you can use this sort of hook, which is now uh, the Airx Super Dry. Again, barbless, but the original hook that I used, and I'm going to use today, um, because I want to explain the thinking behind it, is uh, this uh, very vast terrestrial hook. I, I'm not sure whether you can get them. You used to get them from Partridge. I'm not sure whether they're still available, but it was the T2000. Perhaps Tim will be able to answer that. But... Um, Right, this has a micro barb on it, which I don't particularly like. Mm -hmm. But you can see that it is. Um, where's my glasses gone? Not like. that, no, my wife's glasses. Right. So what you can see is got a short shank. Yeah. Right. Um, and quite a large gape on it. Yeah. And that's why it, it works so well for me initially. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is is I'm just going to wax this a little bit. Focus it. So yeah. it's a very vast. No, focus. Uh, is it oh. not focused? No. no. There not we yet. go. That's it. Hey. Uh, hey. Even a broken watch is right twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many hours I played with this camera today to make sure it was all tickety-boo. And that I wouldn't have any hassle. <laughs> Working then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still planning and preparation. <laughs> as, as, I, as I was taught so well in the military. Right. The six Ps, mate. Yeah, absolutely. So, this is the blue done. Um, and I've broken, broken a toe off, and the best bit is probably here in the middle. Now, you can use, don't throw the stuff away, right? I used to collect all the waste and put it into a, um, a box, and I'd make dubbing out of it. You can now buy snowshoe dubbing, and if you mix it with silver and other hairs and rabbit hairs, it makes a tremendous dubbing. It makes flies float like a cork. Uh, but I'm actually going to just take a small bit out from here. And I've cut that out. And that will probably do me five, six flies. All right. Mark, do you find the best is in between the toes on that? Right. You've got, right. Absolutely. You got to break the feet open yeah. on the toes because sometimes they're sold as a toe. Yeah. Right. Now, what this is, the best bit is from there to there on this. Sorry, from there to there. Yeah. Right. For flies like this, but don't get used. You you can still utilize all this. Yeah. It still floats because it uh, it uh, gets rid of the water. 
but I find that with this smaller stuff, and I'm, 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 what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning all this loose hair from in, underneath, and there's lots of it. Uh, there you go, from there. Stick that in a box, and that's a tremendous bit of dubbing. It really is. The partridge still doing very vast hooks? They do very vast, uh, a lot of very vast stuff, but I don't know whether they do the hooks more, to be fair. All right, because... Um... I use their leaders and their tippet. Yeah. It's very, it's very good. Well, no, no, I've been abandoned as a um, as a, a a member of the pro team. Uh, have you? Yeah. Well, they, they haven't told me. They've just took me off the thing about a couple of years ago. So I I've think I've seen quite a few, haven't they? I I'd only been on there twenty odd years, like, uh, mm. and I did them a pile of films. Right, so what I've done is I put this in and I'm creating this post. And the under hair, it, the post doesn't need to be too big. Put that at an angle. Could you focus it, Marv? Sorry, has it gone out again? Yeah. There we go. That, That's it. All right. I what it is, as soon as it sees something else, it wants to go and join it. Yeah. As the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> right, so this is my thoracic hump here. Right. <laughs> and I'm bringing this up at that point, and I quite often just put a turn or two around. Now I have tied this, so there's my post, if you like, or my wing, uh, and, and I've got no hassle with anybody trimming it or nip, cutting it down to a little bud or whatever. It's whatever you want to do. Uh, as I have said so many times before, it is your full flay. You can do what you want. Now... I'm picking a, a relatively good good quality red game hackle. Right, and I'm just preparing this off camera. And what I'm doing is I'm going to tie it up with the poor face facing me. All right. So again, I'm using a figure of eight tying on, but against the post. I'm just going to spin that up. A little bit around the post, and then what I can do is, is to make sure that that comes down. Now, a lot of people are not aware. I tie these with the hackle downward, uh, downwards, right? So it's concave, and I also tie them convex. Now, why would you do that? Because See, some fish, well, sorry, like in the water. Yeah, the fish will want it deeper in the water, and quite often, the the first sign of that is, is when they actually start smashing it and trying to drown it, right? Because they're taking the the emerging, um, ascending, uh, dung, which is still under the surface. Um, so what they do is, is that that they. They'll sometimes take it when it's a bit deeper within that. So now this is my copper and green or peacock fine tinsel. And this bit is important. What I'm doing is 
I'm tying this on. I'm pulling it out deliberately just to show you how rubbish I really am. You don't have to show us, we know. <laughs> well, well, I've proved it, don't worry. <laughs> Hey, hey I, I, are there any ladies on this? Oh, dear. oh now they're on. The power's no. going again. Yeah. There's a few old women on. <laughs> well, I, I have to remind you that I, le I learned very on, early on in my military career that there's two types of people in this world. Both are wankers. <laughs> those that know it and those that don't. And the dangerous buggers are those that don't. <laughs> right, so I'm bringing this down so that red copper is uppermost. All right? Yeah. All right. Now, what this does, this gives this reflection of hemoglobin that the, fish, uh, the, the, the nymph produces whilst it's ascending up. All right? The other thing that it does... And this is why this material is absolutely perfect. I now take my dye pen, which I've got here. Oh, I was panicking then. All right. Uh, and if you're interested, the dye pens that I use are these uh, Copic Sketch ones. They're brilliant. They last for years and years and years. Uh, you don't need a set of 76. So get a few colours and away you go. All right. And what I'm doing is I'm just colouring that white thread. But what it allows to do, I don't know if you can see there. Can you see the back of the feather? Yeah. Right. Or the back of the, the back that, that glows through, the copper glows through, which is excellent. And that's what you want. So I'm bringing that round. And at the same time, I shall also do my thread. Do you want to do this tonight? Sorry? Do you want to do this tonight? Should we cancel and start again next week? Uh, don't be cruel. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm a raspberry ripple. You're not allowed to pick on me. <laughs> shall I ban him? No, not at all. <laughs> I'll find out where he lives. Exactly. Um, so now I'm just giving this three turns, and you don't need any more than three turns of the rib, right, to come up the body. And the reason for this is, is not as an attractor, but in order for the nymph to escape or, or for the the emerging done to escape from the nymphal shock it pumps it full of air right and, and what i was saying earlier that a lot of the stuff that i'm doing here is actually from observation so i've developed the fly from observing these insects actually hatching uh, and it's fascinating now i found threes enough right uh, otherwise, you, you're starting to wonder, well, why do you want any more? Um, how's that? That's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, this is the Dandare bit, right? Um, I'm probably one of the few people that still has one of these. I, I bought a spare own. one. <laughs> and I, I, I found, can you see what it is? It's a ceramic scrape from Lawrence Waldron, right? Okay. Uh, and they're like rocking all shit now because you stopped getting them and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I bought a spare one because I was dropping everything. And within a week, it gone missing. And I wondered, where on earth could that be? So I checked my son's house. And like uh, most of my things as a parent, I found it there. 
together with all the other things that went missing from our house. God Power love again, it. mate. So I'm just stroking this, putting the the flattened thread across my finger, and I stab it, not my finger, the thread, and it opens it up. And I'm just taking some of this. Into that dubbing loop. And I'll re-spin the thread. Is that the snowshoe dubbing you had earlier? No, this is the rabbit face. Uh -huh. Right? This is this rabbit face. This is this magical bit uh, of hair from its... It's a lot soft, softer... But it, 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 it's also with the spikiness, it gives off that lovely look of thoracic legs and, and, and things going on there. Do you know what I mean? Uh, as it starts to, because I don't know if you know, the duns actually come out of the top of the fly and leave the shuck in the water. So this bit's actually in the water. water. Right now, you have a choice. Right, um, and I'm not going to do it. You can finish this off there, or you can take your thread back and then put it around the head. And then what I'm going to do is, having put it behind, I'm going to adjust that and put the hook in that way. Right, I don't think it matters how you do it, but whatever you're comfortable with. Some people I know are not happy about moving the hook within the vise, but provided you leave the pressure from the bobbin holder. And I'm just going to wind this on. And I'm probably going to do two to three winds underneath each other. Two and a half to be exact. Come up, pull the hackle to the left hand side, and make sure that I'm going over the top of that and all the fibers three times with that. Take my scissors, and I'm not going to cut, I'm just going to leave it open and push forward. And I've got that for the next fly. I'm now going to come underneath. Once I've once again coloured in there with my day pen and whip finish underneath the fly or underneath that parachute hackle. So make sure that I've got all those bits there. Two, three, four, five. If you want three, will do, and that is the fly tied. I know it looks nothing, but if you fish rivers, it will catch you an awful lot of fish. Like I said, I, I, I actually, and if you don't like all that length of stalk. Well, you or the, the snowshoe, you can take it and just cut it so it's more wing like it doesn't matter, it's entirely up to you. But that is my and that is the original snowshoe emerger. Um, can you can you see that all right? Yeah, or, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah. I want to tie some of them after Mark. I like that. I'll tell you, well, yeah. it, 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 you can use wide or whatever, but. Certainly, from this time of year, you, you'll be catching. Power one... again, Mark. Sorry. Power again. Power again. Oh God! Don't panic, Mister Murdering. Don't let it happen. <laughs> uh, 
what you can do if you want is to actually var do this in parts and varnish the body. I never have, because once you get into the rhythm of time, they're so quick to tie. Yeah. Um, uh, and I don't varnish underneath the hackle. But what I do do is sometimes where the hackle there is uh, flat or concave, I sometimes as I have it convex so it fishes deeper. Yeah. All right. So you happy with that? Excellent. Yeah. Again, Mark, how would you fish that? Was a single fly? A single dry fly, upstream yeah. or downstream, depending what the rules of the water apply. Okay. Uh, you can also utilize that when the um, <clears throat> pond olive or lake olives are coming off the still waters. Yeah. Uh, it just works really, really well. Excellent. Thank what you. size is that, Mark? Sorry? Well, what size did you tie that in? That was a size 16. Uh, I tied them in 14 as well. Yeah. But these only came in 14s and 16s a size anyway, which is the T2000. Yeah. yeah. I've got some... Um, but you could tie them in anything. Yeah, I've got some of the, you know, the K14A partridge, the cancer merger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do, yeah, absolutely perfect. Well, it, it will certainly do for the next fly I'm going to show you. Um, because I, I've developed a, I'm just a, adjusting my machine as I often do. Um, this again is, um, my own development of a, a winging method. Um, uh, and what is different with it is, is that, um, sorry, I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way because otherwise I'll end up buried in the stuff. Is that um, the hook that I used to use for this used to be a... Um, uh, a um, pupa hook, which was uh, a Tiemco one, and I've got them here, but it's absolutely pointless me showing you on a hook that you can't don't have access to. So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it because they stopped making them years ago, uh, and I'm trying to get Rx to to make the hook as it was, because it's, it's defunct, so I don't think there's any copyright on it. But these are our curved dry fly barbless uh, Arex, uh, and they're, they're, they're the five one ones. Okay, one one, sir. Size 14. And turn it on a size 14, so you can see what happens. Okay. So why have you um, decided to go barbless? Is it catch and release? Yeah, well, I, I only ever catch and release now anyway. Okay. Uh, but I land more fish with barbless than I do um, with barbed. Okay. Uh, one of the issues is because I've got no feeling in this right hand anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if I'm trying to um, unlock a fish... And I don't know whether he looks out or whatnot, even with a catch em, because I, I I tend to put my finger down the line and hook it out like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's far easier with a barbless. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I won't accuse me of having any, uh, any of that. Mm -hmm. right. uh, now, what I've done is I've put the hook down so the bend is available, so it's been held by the hook point. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Right, now. Focus it, please, Mark. Sorry? Focus it. Oh, boy, oh. And your power again, mate. And the, and the power. Oh, God. You got me doing everything. Exactly. <laughs> Can you make a coffee, please? No sugar. <laughs> it's already, is that focused now? Uh, no. Not yet. Uh, Is that it? Yeah. It's coming. Has it come yet? Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. There you okay. go. Yeah. I can hear it breathing heavy. 
Right. The, the, has everybody heard of the Universal Dogstone or the or the Universal Betis? No. Yeah. Charles Patton. Well, the Dogstone was Charles's pattern, but the Universal Betis, I think, was uh Lincoln Hamer. Uh but um so I'm gonna tie it in that way, but I'm tying it reversed. Okay, so um I've waxed the thread and I'm putting this underbody of wax on there, he says knowingly. <laughs> Why on earth I've picked gel spun for this? I don't know. Right. So I brought it up to that point there. Right. So the actual shape of the hulk is going to assist me in shaping the fly. Okay. So the fly, the hulk will actually be uppermost. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you understand it because I bloody don't know. <laughs> so. I'm just this. Right, I'm taking some oxygen. You can use whatever you want in the tail feather. It is your fly. The fly police will not leap upon you. Well, unless you're lucky. <coughs> And I'm tying that pinch and loop on top. There. And I'm actually going to probably gone too far there. Bring that down. Make sure that's all tied in. Now, the, the joy is that those feathers or those fibers go down in between the vice jaws, so you can see them there. Um, right, I, I cut out a piece here, right, for the rib. I am using Purcell silk, but I'm not. I'm actually using a modern day replacement. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but um, Legarten have started making yeah. old fashioned silk threads. Uh, uh, and you can get them, I think, through um, Fly Time Boutique. Uh, and they're, they're as close to the originals that you can get. I've got some of the originals. In fact, I've got quite a few of the originals, but um, it's a it's a case of if you can't get them, which most people can't, then you can recognise there is an alternative. Does that help? I'm ever so kind like that, aren't I? <laughs> what do you mean, no? Right. And I'm just tying this in. This is the rib. Excuse me. Oh, Mark. Hello again. Sorry. Hey, what? Hello. Oh, Christ is getting faster and faster, isn't it? Um, dum, 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 dum. What am I looking for? Oh, I. Right. Now, the materials I use in this for the dubbing is this fly right. Okay. Um, fantastic colours, and the colour for the universal done is golden brown 17 uh, as a tiny little butt, and it is dark olive, which is number 42 for the rest of the fly. So what I'm actually is you you can you can change the pattern to whatever you want. All right, it's entirely up to you. 
for the purposes that, that you want. But if I show you um, a genuine pattern, then you you might have faith in me again. <laughs> So I'm just spinning up the thread. Hey, somebody's pointing the finger at me now. Oh, what's this called, Ma? Uh, oh, you come here. No, it's a, it, 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 it is a reverse. It, it, it's, I really haven't given it a name, but it's a, a universal done tying. So it's got this little butt of. Uh, this number 17 fly right which can be like a um, perceived as either uh, a colour change within it or uh, an egg even so you can use it as a spinner you can use it whatever you want but the winging system that I'm tying on it is not as a spinner This is Olive Fly Right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move before a rib. I thought I'll throw everything on the floor. And I'm going to bring this up. And what you can see is, is that tail comes out. Can you see the tail coming out from the hook or have I bugged yeah. it all up? Yeah, that's no, fine. fine. Oh, oh. Right now, I'm going to put the rib on now, and then I'm going to be able to move the hook again. So I'll take my dubbing twister because I've doubled this ribbing on, and I'll take my dubbing twister because it's a lot easier to twist it like this than I it can't is. see. Can you centralize it? Sorry, can you oh. centralize it? Have I moved my um, there we go. Oh, I tell you what, you lot are difficult audience, aren't you? Actually, yeah. want to see what I'm doing? Yeah. What you'll notice is I'm not using the facility where I can rotate this voice uh, for no other reason than not everybody. When I do demos, I don't. I do when I'm tying, but when I'm doing demos, I don't because not everybody has a row rotating voice um, and it can be bloody irritating for somebody that's showing something that can't be copied by the individual oh Click. that's it you see i beat you then didn't i yeah i could see i, I could hear people breathing is as fast as anything ready <laughs> nobody oh. said them. <laughs> now uh, the, look i'll beat you to it yeah and there's <laughs> You've got to give somebody a chance, Mark. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Right. I'm now using hen hackle. All right, and this is to create the wing. And I'm going to create a single wing. And what I'm doing is I'm stripping off... Hey, yeah, you'll like this, Tim. The plumescence. <laughs> the plumescence. From the base of the foot, so I can hold it by the rachis. As you see, it's got no fluff on it. And then what I'm doing is, I'm taking all the fibers off the left hand side. Right. right. See there? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm gonna change the position of the hook.
because this is going to now be tied in at that point there. Now, if I had any sense, I would have picked a feather that was about four foot long, or the barbs were about four foot long. But I'm going to create the wing out of this, which will go over the top of the hackle. Now, for those that are interested, I'm almost completed my flatane book on dry flight, my thoughts on dry fly fishing, which covers many disciplines of where the dry fly is used. Um, and this is the one of the patterns in there, but I haven't told you how to tie it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so that's going to form my wing. So what I'm, I need to do now is, I'm taking this darker done, and it, this is this. I don't know if you can see that. It, it's a dark sort of chocolate, but it's it's lovely rusty color. Um, and one of these will probably do about three or four flies. Probably do about half a dozen, to be honest. Now. I take this and I tie it at that point there. Could, could, Again, you, could you centralize it in the screen? So, so you go, your awkward you are, aren't you? Lovely job. Is that, is that it, mate? Sorry. Perfect. It's gone now. <laughs> I don't say that now. Can you hear the slam? Oh, I tell you. I'm going to be very busy these next few weeks visiting houses. <laughs> the Father Christmas. It won't be bloody Father Christmas, I can promise. So I've, I've now prepared that hack already for time. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken this thread or dye that thread, but I'm now going to take some of the dubbing that I had in my hand, which is buggered off from everywhere. Oh, there it is. And this is going to be in the thorax. All right. So I'm using similar what I put in. You can go darker in the thorax if you want, but by the fact that I've darkened the actual thread as well, it should have an effect. Oh, no, here we go. Oh, okay. God. Uh, yes, my child. Why have you why have you spoiled me Easter this year, Dad? <laughs> well, you was only hanging about anyway, weren't you? I'm sorry? You were only hanging about anyway, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I called my mother up and I said, you can see our house from here. <laughs> right, so I'm taking this out. I'm not worried, too worried about the length of these hackles. All right, and you'll see why. Because as I bring it up, and I tie it off at that point there, mm -hmm. two turns, and then I'm bringing that silk back through over that hackle mm -hmm. uh, to that point there, right? Now I have a choice now to take it all off camera and throw it over my shoulder. No. What I'm actually going to do is I'm taking the hackle and I'm going to, between thumb and forefinger, I'm just going to spread it downwards. Mm -hmm. those, those bits that are left, noting not, not to cut through the bloody stalk, I've got rid of, right? See that? Mm -hmm. And now I take this. And I want this about the length 
of the the body pull it down pinch and loop draw up and that creates my wing ah yes all right uh, interesting um, right so what i'm going to do now without cutting the tail off Cut that piece off. I've got a piece of fibre there that's come out from the wing, which I shall dispose of whilst you can't see it. Don't like that one. That one's a bit rogue. Now, your choice is you could leave these fibers going forward as if they were legs going and, and reduce them a bit or take them off. I'm actually going to take them off so you can see me finish the fly. And then I'm going to finish it. Mark, can I ask why there's only one wing? Right, because the trigger, the, the point is, is that you want it there as a trigger because what they don't they don't necessarily see two wings. When the dun's floating down, it's got its wings together quite often, isn't it? Or slightly apart. Yeah. And what I'm trying to correct uh, create is is a um, silhouette of a fly that has a number of trigger points. All right, and I, 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 oh, ooh, beat you. I I asked um, I asked Paul Proctor that once, Mark. Why he ties one wing in, and he said exactly the same as what you've just said. Yeah, well, I, I, taught, I taught Paul a lot in my days, you know. <laughs> he said exactly the same that most flies come down or be on one wing or look like they've got one wing. Yeah. Well, uh, if, if I just explain with this, what I've done is cut it under, right? Underneath, took the fibers off, right? And the whole point is, as I take this out of here, Um, so I'm just going to one side. I don't know whether you can see there the profile of the fly. Yeah. But you you have a tail, a body, the footprint, yeah. and the wing. Mm -hmm. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to pull the camera back out a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Straighten the wing a bit because I like to do that. All right. But then if you if you look there on the deck, yeah. There's a fly there. And if I try and focus in on on that, right, you'll, you'll see. That that sits perfect mm. as it should. I, I mean, you imagine if it's you, you got a hook, you got a line tied onto that. Yeah, that's very buggy, isn't it? Well, it, it's got to me, and, and I've I said this in my book. The way a um, trout sees uh, is oh hello, what's happened there? What have I done? 
They don't lick it up in my, Mr. Menorin. Uh, the way a trout there sees is, is yeah. right, it doesn't see a fly. It sees a tail and it sees a wing. Yeah. It sees a body and it sees footprints. And as it comes closer into its window, all those bits come together, right? So the fish is aware, is that food? And how many times have you seen a fish in a river or in a lake turn to something uh, and then go, no, I'm refused it. Mm -hmm, and yeah. it, it's not refused it because it's not the right fly. It's refused it because it hasn't seen the triggers in it that it requires for it to recognize it as food. Yes. Now, you get a massive hatch of, um, say, blue winged olives, right? From May onwards. Initially, the trout ignore them completely, don't they? Mm. Have you noticed that? And you've seen this, you're covered in the bloody things are coming around, and you're thinking, why on earth aren't they taking them? And a lot of it, and, and yet they'll still take the yellow maidens, which have been off a fortnight before, or the occasional granum. And a lot of it is, is because they're taking this stuff they recognize as food and as a food source. And then they've got to actually switch on, and that could take two or three days for them to switch on. The only time I have seen that not happen is when red ants get on the water or black ants get on the water and then the river just comes alive but it's almost like they're expecting that hatch okay. because of the yeah. conditions the water temperature yeah. the stillness the air pressure um and another thing i mean some of the little hints in in the old books like red regrini he talked about his salmon taking times the amount of people have said to me, said, I've read that, and it doesn't give you any times. What they missed was, was the point that he's talking about the activity of birds, um, how uh, things start to move, the dippers come to the water, the wagtails come to the water. I mean, when you get that, you know that the fish have already been feeding on the ascending nymphs for about an hour. Mm -hmm. They're only coming up to take the stillborns and the duns as they come off. I, 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 it's, I, I cannot emphasize enough on that. I've said it in my book. Spend time, whether it's so, still water or river, get below the skyline, sit there and watch. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, it'll enjoy you. You'll enjoy your day more because you'll observe more. Because you might see the hobby with its red pajama trousers on flying through, right, <laughs> taking a sparrow out or whatever, right, which you may have missed. Yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, there's more to fishing than fishing. Yeah, and hundred percent. And people forget that. I mean, oh, I I get so frustrated when um, people say, "Oh, I, I so how many fish you've had?" Oh. I, I've had 40 fish today, urine-nymphing. And I said, oh, what, did you have any off top? No, I, I just carried on nymphing. And I think you have missed the cream of the bloody sport. And, 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 and I'm not against urine-nymphing as a technique at all, right? What I'm, what I'm against is, is that people pick on a discipline and just concentrate on that, become absolutely perfectionist because it, it's, it's often a great competition thing, <laughs> but then they lose the sight of the joy of spider fishing, upstream and downstream, which I've been an advocate for years. And the only person that's listened to me is my boy. Mm -hmm. I, I, and last year, I think in Team Mary, we had over 240 fish for 20 visits. Bloody hell. Yeah. He, he had... Uh, a fifth of the amount of fish that were caught there. And he said he loves fishing. And he, but, but he's fishing spiders upstream and downstream and on top of the water. You know, so to me, it's like a, a dry fly or a semi 
the fly, if you like. Yeah. Right. Um, what I would like to show you now is a Stillwater Fisherman's Beauty. Oh, yeah, go for uh, it. <laughs> I, 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 well, I thought you'd like it, you tar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever heard of the top hat? The what, sorry? The top hat. No. No. Oh, you are to be enlightened shortly. Right. If I go back to this other camera, the top hat is a common still water pattern. You know when you get those occasions where the fish are just simpling for the last hour, and no matter what you put in front of them, no matter what dry, you put a yeah. big dry fly or sedge on and you twitch it and yeah. You might get a fish turn on it and boil, but it's not taking. They're taking micro midges, okay. all right? Uh, and this fly is called the top hat, all right? Yeah. And I, it's, I'm going to tie it for you in um, in a larger size so you can see exactly what it is. Uh, but before I go, look at this, deadly. I'd never go to the Olympics, would I? <laughs> right, there. right, so I'm just moving stuff out of the way. Right, so I use a specific phone for this, and I'll go to the camera in a minute. But I'm using this um, hard stereo phone from I, I get it from Rutland I do I think it's a waspy uh, I don't know if you know it if you don't get the hard close cell phone it's not going to work but that's uh, you can make great booby eyes out of this as well so it comes in about five sizes and I cut this with uh, I cut them myself with the um, Uphaven drill cutters yeah and you just push them in and flick them out, and it's great. But the joy is you can go as small as that, right? Which, if you're not very good, uh, can also work for you if you're not very good or have difficulty with doing parachute hackles. Because if you tie that in as your post, right, and put your hackle around it, that will hold it down because it will go in where you're putting your hackle on instead of resist it. Um, so, um, and you can get them all shapes and sizes. I I could if you want. They don't like it up in Mister Menor, and I'm telling you, right. Um, and this, what I do is I cut them at an angle with a razor, right, which I'll have to do now. Because one of the things I do do, so I've got a short piece like that, which is cut at an angle. Can you see that all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. And then I take a flame and just stroke it so it seals it off. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. What was that? Is that me? <laughs> Well, I've been blamed for everything else tonight. Right, so. Um, I had a brilliant day with my son on Cloedog with this. Um, we had 80 fish each Ooh. on the dries. Wow. Button, right? And we come to the point where I said, I don't want to catch anymore. <laughs> My end was like that. I mean, back was in half, but it was just one of those days. Absolutely tremendous. But um, it works. Right, so. Oh, hello. Oh, I know you can't see me. Don't shout at me. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, no, we can't. Yes, you can. 
Barnes. Look, look, it's one finger and it's my forefinger. It's not exactly. my middle finger. <laughs> right. Is that focused in? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. You can tie this on a bent hook or a big hook or whatever you want. All right. You can tie it on a heavy hook because it's going to hold up. You can tie it just black. You can tie it in different colors. And the one I'm going to tie is an olive and red. So I'm using the same hook that I used last time. So this is slightly curved, okay? Sorry, I'm looking for my wife's glasses again because I thought she'd been in and Adam. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is tie on that foam, okay? So I'll put an underbody of silk. Try and pull it off and show how weak I really am. Here's a piece I've prepared and I put it on at that point there. Now this is gel spun, so I'm putting it over gently. If I don't, if I go too quick, too hard, what will happen is I'll end up with about 10 pieces because it'll all break up. And then I can squeeze it down. I'm not worried about it moving at the moment. Right. Now, what that's given me is that lovely sort of fat thorax, isn't it? Yeah. You can see all that? Yeah. 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 Right. For the ribbing, which I'm going to tie in now, I'm utilizing this black sort of plastic, it is. Uh, it, it's just a plain black glitter but I, I'll keep it on this spool um, and I, don't, I don't even know what the make is but any black ribbing can you can utilize not an issue it's entirely up to you Stop yawning, Peter. Oh, excellent stuff. <laughs> right. So that's there. Uh, if you want, you can put the uh, uh, um, cheeks in there. Um, I found there's no need whatsoever. All right. Uh, but the idea is, is it using this foam as opposed to anything else? And as you can see, it looks like a top hat, doesn't it? Okay, yeah. Hence the reason of its name. Um, right. Let me look at the areas. Right. It then has the first half is red holographic. Oh, power. Just testing. Yeah. It was a bit slow then. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, you the committee's going to make you say whatever you do, don't let's have that bloody Herbert Roberts again. Christ. <laughs> <almighty>. <laughs> right.
And now what I'm doing is before I start winding this up, well, I, I, and the, the reality is, is that you can use any material that you want, right? So if you want to, to have it as, um, I'm just evening it all off and filling in that step. Might take an hour. <laughs> Not really, but the way I, the way my looks are going tonight. Might take two. You're doing very well, mate. Yeah, even a broken watch is right twice a day, I know. Exactly. Right, so. Again, you can use a bit of varnish or whatever. This is just belt and braces. You don't have to, but I'm just sticking this really thin super glue. And you can change your color combinations, of course. So half the body is holographic. And I'm just building up that underbody. Of white because that, believe it or not, is going to become olive. And you can do it olive, you can do it yellow, you can do whatever color you want, uh, or you could do it a lighter olive. I'm doing it this dark olive because it's, <gasps> it's easy peasy. I wonder if I could give that piece of thread even longer so I could swing my arm right around the kitchen. Not that I'm in the kitchen either, but. Right, and then I'm going to segment it with this. Right, little secret here. You see, it keeps slipping back to the base. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of time wax, and that will allow it to grip. Uh, You've earned your money well tonight, Peter. Oh, that's no problem at all, mate. You're welcome. I thought it was indigestion in the first half of the night. <laughs> but... <laughs> Got the gist of it now. <laughs> bit, a bit <big> gas. <laughs> I've known him too long, if to. <laughs> Right, and again, what I would do now is varnish that. All right, with Arda's nails, whatever you can use, um, UV epoxy, whatever, thing, whatever you want. But I ain't going to do it now. All right, and then just take, and the choice is yours, either what I would call a black claret or black. It seals for, now black claret, um, 
is normally for it to look proper is either dyed red before it's dyed black and you get a deep rich black otherwise these blue blacks are absolutely uh i don't rate them at all i don't know about you do you feel the same way tim or uh, to be honest i don't use that much mark to be fair but i know what you mean yeah yeah i mean most seals fur is going now i i actually use um the embarrassing thing is I've had kilos of it over the years. Yeah. Um, and I've still got a lot of stuff here with it. But I, I use merino wool a lot now. Yeah. Which is, I don't know if you've ever used it, it's really soft, it's beautiful dubbing material, and it's translucent. Yeah. Right, um, just again, finish off with a black head. Not that I've got a blackhead, but finish off with a blackhead. And it's a simple tie. No hassle at all. <laughs> Right, uh, and it works. It really does work. Uh, and like I said, we were just popping those out. And the thing is, if you're like me and you forget the wife's glasses when you go fishing, right, that sits in the water, but you can see that mm. like a bloody cork. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and um, I mean, let's be honest, it's clever, they're not that shy in showing that they've taken the fly, is it? But it uh, we, the one day that we went there, in fact, it was the first time I've fished in three years when we went this one day. Um, and I said, I'm just fishing dries. I said, whether we catch or not, I don't care. And the first cast, all three separate fish came up and took three separate flies. Oh, yeah. Well. And I've never had that in all the time I was competition fishing. And I missed all three. <laughs> I missed all three because I was watching that my son's flies and he said did you see that i said well you've just had a fish take your fly he said well you've had three take two of your flies there was three swirls where the flies were but brilliant fun do you want to see any more are you happy with that or is there any questions you want to ask or no you carry on mark oh you bastard <laughs> <laughs> I, I shall finish on one last fly <laughs> um, and this is a CDC fly. We've got unlimited time. Well, you <laughs> might have. <laughs> my, my issue is I haven't got an unlimited bladder. <laughs> well, go and have a wee now. Yeah. Certainly not. Oh, me on power again, mate. Yes, uh, power off. Oh, God's sake. Got another oh. pee break. <laughs> no, 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 I've just dropped a spool, that's all. Oh. Oh, bollocks. Oh. <laughs> that's a mark I know and love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I thought I'd been very well behaved today. You have. Look, you've got extra brownie points. Well, I did have until that last comment. <laughs> Put the lid on that super glue in case you knock it over. Uh, oh, I look, look at that. Are you, you can't see what I'm doing here, can you? No. Ah, oh, just Isn't as against well. the law. I put I put my bottle down now. <laughs> right. Hello. There he is. Hey. <laughs> Last one I dropped. Okay. Right. Um, this fly is again has worked very well for me. 
Um, it is a CDC pattern. But you're not going to hold that against me, are you? I hope not. I was first introduced to CDC on Brennig. <laughs> and they said, how many, how many feathers do you put on? I said, oh, four. Well, that'll sink then. Because <laughs> of the way the waves were there. So... Um, Minimum of six, uh, and some people used to have up to 10 feathers CDC on there. And I thought, no, no, that's why I started using snowshoe. I'm sure of it. Um, right, the pattern I'm going to use, and I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing, um, same up because I've gone out. Now, I just want to talk about CDC. One of the things CDC will allow you to do is to move the profile of the actual fly in the water, right? So if you, you can have it with it going forward over the hook eye, and it'll, that's a true shuttlecock, okay? You can have it going back as the dry fly which will hang the rest of the fly in and coat it over as if it's an emerging um, uh, sedge or um, as an emerging midge or something that has a flatter wing, right? <laughs> or um, the way I, I, I first developed this um, for competition fishing um, and it works so so well and nobody else was using it right and uh, i first of all started tying all in hairs here and then I, I find it down um so the first thing that it is is uh and i do like glow bright um you do realize how that fluoresces don't you yeah I love it, I yeah, yeah. Uh, it, which is tremendous. But what I found is, is this um, Michael Froden um, SSS bloody thread is really very, very good as well. All right. So I'm going to start off with this, right, as an underbody. And the reason why I'm doing it as an underbody is that this still comes through. Um, Will you swap cameras for us, Mark? I was just wondering when you was going to ask I was going to say that. I, 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 I'm just keeping you on your toes, you know. Even a broken watch is right twice a day. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, just, just to find out the power's gone off. <laughs> <coughs> bastards sorry did i say such a thing um this has got a red copper rib oh i'll say a red copper rib it's red wire which is copper which has been reddened does that make sense yeah yeah not really no <laughs> this time of night i don't care I've been concentrating the past three days on a... Oh, I'm sorry you get tablets like that, can't you? No, no not constipated, concentrating. <laughs> that's that's something there's an ex-place inspector you'd know nothing about. <laughs> um, I, um, my daughter asked me to tie a, a, a classical, and I said, oh, I, first mistake was I said, what would you like, dear, something traditional? Oh no, I've seen this fly called the Dali. All right. All right. Has anybody heard of it? Seen it? No, go on. All right. Uh, it, it's got things in it like Mern's quail and um, uh, each section is silk, which is veiled with Indian crow 
and a jungle cock, right? So engine crows on the top and jungle cocks on the sides. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a full wing. It's, th it's basically three wings. Um, and it is, it's been a bit of a bounder. Yeah. So, is your daughter into fishing as well, then, Mark? Um, into fishing? Yeah. Uh, or, I just think the, you, or just uh, the art of flying, fly time. No, 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 no. She doesn't tie flies. She once um, did an article on summer flies, two two page spread. Because what she did was, um, sorry, this is black yeah. floss now going over the centre. Yeah. Right. What she did was um, an article which was posted in Trout and Salmon when she was fifteen. Because wow. as a as a school project mm -hmm. she um wanted to do something around designing a fly okay right uh, and she won the the welsh uh, intellectual innovation properties award wow. junior for, for it um quite simply because what she did instead of saying what fishermen should have and wanted. Yeah. She actually went out and asked them. Oh, excellent. Well, it's a strange thing that, and if you ask yeah. somebody what they want, they, they they often tell you. Yeah. Uh, and um, she she developed this. It was called the Element. And I went. I was. I was still able to walk then. And I went to Russia. Not the place to go when you got. A dicky back, but I went nearly died. And we've been fishing for a couple of days and we, we just weren't hitting the fish. Yeah. Um so somebody said to me, Oh, have you got your daughter's fly? And I said, Oh, yeah. And they said, Well, why don't you try it? And I said, Oh, no, to, to be honest, <laughs> I think it's too big a water for it to be used. No, 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 you've got to try the fly. And I was fishing with Danny North. And Danny said, no, you've got to try it. Put it on, swung round, 25 pound salmon. Wow. Right, landed that, put it out. Ogden lost another at the net, about 18 pound. Wow. Uh, and I had five fish, including Umpy, take it the next hour or two. And we thought, oh, that might work then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the following day, we were fishing the the Litzer, and we were up in the tent pool. Right, sorry, I, I've just put four CDC, oh, feathers together, all yeah. right, uh, which I'm going to tie in by the points. Okay. okay, so I've put the body on, yeah, and I'm go just going to tie this in at that point there. Bring that up and then mm -hmm. pull on the thinner, smaller silk. Tying that on. I was just making sure I was good enough for the right one then. <laughs> I've got form for that. And this is your daughter's pattern. It's called the element. Um and it's uh it's tied on a size uh, or a 22 brass tube. Mm -hmm. Um and I have to say that I, I I only fish the tweed now because I can fish it from a boat. Um, uh, but, uh, and the fly's too big and heavy for when I go up there in July or June, you know, the, the, the week sometimes varies. So I've just ripped that through to there. Bring that up. 
bring the silt down and I'm going to tie that off at that point. And um, I've still got the article, so if you want, Derek, I can send it you uh, as JPEGs. Mm -hmm. Would you like that, Derek? Yes, please. Yeah, and um, but uh, she won all these accolades with it, and um, Christopher Hartley and. Uh, Andy, um, uh, Andy from Hardy's. I can't remember his surname now. That's a nice thing, isn't it? Murray. Andy Murray. Good man. Well spotted. Right. Pleasure. Andy Murray looked at it and viewed it and gave their comments. But it was all designed from anglers who filled out a questionnaire what they would wanted in their favourite fly. Mm -hmm. um, and it bloody worked. It really did work. Uh, right, I'm putting legs in now to the side. And these are single knotted legs, three on each side. Right, so those are loose turns. So I can lift this up and I can shorten these up now. So where does the name come from, the element? Well, she designed, she said, because you can fish it in the water, right? It's got colours of the earth in it and the wind from when you're casting it through the air. Wow. I, I, I mean, a, a thought behind it, but she, she, she sold the rights to the fly to a fly tying company and they never made it. Uh, which I felt disappointed for, but she did all the, it was all to, through information technology, you know, and she, she did all the um, uh, marketing for it, bags and everything else, and labels, because if you remember at that time, uh, was it Fully Mill or one of the Irish guys that went out of business, she used to have a, a fish tag on each of their flies that they sold? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um... It was, an, it was an Irish company. Yeah, that's right. Hello, Mark. Hello. Oh, Hello. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Oh, God, give me a heart attack. Gonna go all fly company. That's the one. That's it. That's it. They were nice lads as well, but I think Paddy Bonner um, put paid to what their wishes, you know, because they were starting to grow and grow and grow. Uh, and I was tying commercially at that time. Uh, and I, they did a great favour to commercial tyres because they wouldn't sell anything under £3.50. And everybody expected a commercial tyre to sit there all day and they wouldn't pay anything more than two and a half, three quid for a custom tie fly, you know. Uh, and it's just... You just think, what on earth is happening like? Right, so what I've done now is I've put a thorax, again, a black seals fur. Just come short. Now, take the CDC, and I'm rubbing it with my needle. Bubbling. So I can put a loop in it, and the loop will form from that. Up and over. So your CDC is actually there within a loop. Draw that back. Just a question. Yes. Do you think the Patagonian air's foot is as good as the snowshoe rabbit? Um, is it not a snowshoe rabbit itself? You see, Don't know. you see, snowshoe rabbit isn't the quite term. It's a hare. It's a yeah. mountain hare look. Um, so um, it, and then they became protected, 
uh, because there used to be hundreds and thousands of them. All of them, and you, most of them were run over by vehicles. Um, and then they became protected and uh, the, 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 there was a number of issues left, right and centre, wasn't there? Well, and all I'm going to do now is put a hackle on. Oh, my favourite hackle of all. This is Cree, but this is this is more of a brown. Grizzle, really. Not dyed, just quite natural. And if I tie this in a different technique, point forward. By the tip. Folded it back, and I only want a couple of turns on this, but I, I'm I'm just putting this sort of Cree hackle on it because it just gives it that difference in colour and movement. Mm. Somebody going to shout power? Power! To the people. Hang on, in the middle, in the middle of a whip finish. Aren't you <laughs> impressed by my dexterity? Unbelievable. You see, I've got to prove even a broken watch is right twice a day. That's the fourth time you said that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's the only one, it's the only saying I know without a swear word in it. <laughs> And that is that it really it sits in the water. Silicon eyes, uh, fly magic on that. But by rubbing it with a needle, mm. it sits beautifully. That tag really pops, doesn't it? Um, well, yeah, it does. It, it gives it a target, you know. Um, does that look at, can you see it a bit better there? Yeah. That, that yeah. looper wing, it doesn't go beyond that tag. Yeah. So the tag is still prevalent. Yeah. But it works. Yeah. It's worked for me. But I I was the first person that started to do the CDC loops like that, certainly on the Welsh circuit. And that I did it one week. And, uh, it was, I was fishing a place competition, which had a lot of the Welsh team in it. And the next week, most of the Welsh team, full team, had all these sort of patterns in there. So it obviously they thought something of it, but it worked. Excellent. Are you happy? Excellent. Right. Right. Really good, Matt. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Uh, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, how many of you have issues with CDC and elk flies, or certainly doing with the uh, dealing with the elk? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, most of the problem is, um, and I, I've got some fine deer hair here. Is the choice of the deer hair, right? I I get mine from I get this micro stuff from um, Spirit River, right? And th and this is green, but if I um, if I just find a, a dry fly. 
Does that mean you're going to tie another one? Yeah. Is that all right? Lovely jubbly. I can bugger off if you want me to. No, you carry on. Nobody's fallen asleep yet. <laughs> well, not for the second time. Hey, you should have been on the partridge one last night. Oh, no. Nah. Somebody oh. fell asleep. No. The snoring was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it was tying. No, nobody was tying. It was just a partridge meeting and Mark was talking. Oh. And then all we heard was... <laughs> <laughs> Do, do, do you know what? The, this is the second time I, I've appeared not on the team again. And I spoke to him. I said, um, have I upset you? He said, well, yes, you have. And I said, could you tell me how? He said, well, listen to me, Mr. Cheatham. I said, I'm not Steve Cheatham. Why aren't you? He said. I said, no. I said, I'm Mark Roberts. He said, no, you haven't upset me. <laughs> And he, he saw me face and he thought I was Steve Cheatham. I mean, just, but he, he, he's well into Sprite now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and and I find lovely bloke, don't get me wrong, but he gets obsessive about yeah. different things. Yeah. Yeah, he's into Sprite, yeah. But the, when they were asking for videos, I did have four videos. All marked up with partridge and everything else. I used two of them, and then I never heard a, I never had a thank you, never heard a thing. The girls were changing every fortnight. <laughs> oh, I just thought, mad, mad. Sprite Camerson? Uh... No, it's no. partridge. Yeah. Sprite and another partridge. partridge, but they're the same colds as a, as a Camerson, aren't they? Power mark. Uh, are they? Oh, oh power. Well done. You know on the part on the sprite, are they are they Camerson, are they? On the no, no. No. Well, why have they got the same cowd on then? I don't know, I don't think. No, you look no, at the cowd no, on the sprite, it's the same as a Camerson. The last three numbers are the same as a Camerson. Same shape and everything. Well, that might be a marketing thing. Yeah. But I, I, I have nothing to do with partridge, so I wouldn't know. I say many years ago when I was at the BFFI, there was um, I think him from Fly Tech. He he was selling Sprite, and he, he told me that was there. He says that's why you have the same they're the same code on them. Oh yeah. If you got a BA thirty, Camerson, and you look at the Sprite, it's an S eight thirty. Yeah. It's the same size look and everything. Uh, don't know. There could be some uh, trade dispute go on there. Then, if you look at if you, you know, did the so the B the B one seven fives, it'd be S S eight A S one seven five. Right, I've gone on to a twelve volt nano silk, and what I'm doing is I'm adding. I put an underbody of silk. Is that a focus mark? Is it? Yeah. Oh, my eyes are gone. Better. Is that all right? No. Well, there, there, there's some fi uh, feather fibers on the on the, on the on the mat. That's it. Oh God! Oh, your battery's going now, Mark. <laughs> well, it bloody should because it's it's plugged into the. Um... Well, it's this change battery pack. Oh, no, it's not. Oh. No. When you really say the fogs, make sure your thumb look better, Mark. Um, <laughs> this looks like it's been circumcised. <laughs> you met the wife. <laughs> oh, there. Right. Um, so I put two turns over that, and I'm pulling this CDC for the right to the end of its tip. And then I do another and then bring it round. Right, nine times out of ten, that will come out completely, and I got away with it. They don't like it up in Mr. Mannering. They don't. Right, so what I'll do is...
take the CDC feather and twist it because this gives it real strength. Oh, oh. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bleep. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> no, it happens, doesn't it? You know. I thought I bought it in that millimeter too far. Yeah. That's it. So what's this one called, Mark? This this is a CDC in elk. Because I know a lot of people have a problem doing the um, the elk wing. Um the CDC part is quite easy, unless you pull it out, of course. <laughs> so I'm just twisting the CDC feather. And bring it around in touching turns, which gives it this uh, sort of segmented effect. Oh, it's all gone quiet out there now. We're all concentrating for you. No, no, no I'm just thinking the battery's gone. <laughs> you say constipated. You met the wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, Mark, them hackle players are the best on the market. I prefer it with a long handle because I can see what I'm doing then and keep turning the bloody video back on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the stalk off it, right? Okay. And I, I never cut these. I just pinch these out to what I think is about right and then squeeze them down. Now, what I have is this little tool. Oh, yes. And this is the gallops sliding, right? And this is what I did. This is a hair stacker. There's about four different sizes. I've got all the sizes and it is absolutely fantastic. Never seen them. Ah, well, I know people have tried to copy them in, in Europe. Um, but all I'm doing is now I've taken the bunch of air. Right. right. I should say, I think, Mark, they're quite expensive to come from America, aren't they? Uh, I did have a friend who lived there who's gone for me and posted them across, but um, they're well worth it, honestly. Um, it's invaluable it's invaluable and you'll see why if I stick these fibers into there all right top them down what you get is on the base here you can see the points mm -hmm. right so if I tap those down right so you can see the points there are all coming into line push that out. Oh, yes, ready to go. Ready to go. I can yeah. grab it. And this is the secret with this fly. You measure it first and then cut. All right. A lot of people. Sorry, I'm just. So I've cut there. See that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm tightening this up because it's unraveled again. And a lot of this is about confidence. All right, are you ready? Yeah. It's back from the eye, just slightly or just over the eye. One. Turn up. Pinch. So it's held on by one turn. One over to secure it. And then one through the center. Mm -hmm. Pull the head back and then tie behind the eye. So it's only got a maximum of three. 
three turns of thread. Three turns. Oh, so it's got two over it and one through it. Through half of it. And there it is. Excellent. Simple. Simple. I've let that roll over a bit because I got all excited. <laughs> But that's the CDC now, and you can see how that head sits up now, yeah, and utilizes it. But a lot of people are just not aware of how simple it can be, and you can whack those out under under the minute, like you know. Excellent, thank you very much. My, well, my pleasure. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I like to see fingers being raised. Yeah, do it at a time normally. <laughs> Ta -da! Uh, have you found it useful? Very yes, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very All good. Right. Yeah, I've learned a lot tonight. I've kept it to simple patterns. I mean, uh, it's. I'm one of the few that actually ties patterns for the sea. Sea trout patterns, salmon patterns, river trout patterns, competition style patterns. I can even do a blob, believe it or not. <laughs> but but, but um, it, 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 a lot of people tend to specialize around an air of one or two flies, mm -hmm. uh, which is fine. But to me, that's not, they're not advocates of fly tying. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody can tie a couple of nymphs and whatnot, but because I did think about showing you some weaving techniques tonight, but we'll not basket, not basket weaving. We'll do that again. No, yeah. I'll, I'll go off and do the basket weaving now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, you've enjoyed it. Yeah, lovely. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. thank you very Any much. Questions? Cheers, Mark. Okay, Before you go, is there any questions? Anybody? Yeah, uh, date for your diary, Friday the 20th of May. Uh, if you're available, I'd like to take you out on the lash. On the lash? On the lash. I, I'll, I'll let you know, mate. That sounds okay, like mate. a very good idea. Yeah. Spot a lunch. Spot a lunch. Yeah. And a few bevies. Indeed. I'll get the missus to pick me up then. <laughs> Literally. Off the deck, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I've got to be honest. I, I don't drink. Well, I, I lie like cheap, naffy watching when I say I don't drink that much. I, I never get to the point where I can't yeah, hold myself much. up. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, I, I, I yeah. find that hard enough yeah. <laughs> as it is. Yeah. But, uh, no, 20, Friday, the 20th of May. Let me know. I will. I will, mate. Okay, mate. Well, so, well send me your reminder because. Okay, okay. Uh, otherwise, I'm buggered. Yeah, I'll make it earlier, but I'm, I'm I'm back working again now, as you know. Oh, God, yeah. God. Yeah. So you're saving up for it then? No. <laughs> well, you might need to. Nah. No problem at all, mate. Hey, Come Mark, on. you you'd be a Gwent, Mark. Sorry. You'd be at Gwent out on weekend. I'm tying there. So yeah, I, you're tying as well, like because I'm not I, I've normally been involved for the since its inception of organizing the bloody day. I'm uh, sitting next to you. Are you? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna bring a <laughs> pea shooter. <laughs> <laughs> I think Stu's there as well. Stu Foxy's there, isn't he? Uh, well, I don't think he can come this year. Uh, he's a good or is he coming with the van? I think he's coming. I think he's coming. Is he? Yeah. He's a good lad, old Foxy. Yeah. You, you, you know, I know Mark Patterson very well, do you? Yeah. We, we go back 40 years or more. He's a nice lad, isn't he? Uh, he uh, he's a bugger, I tell you. <laughs> First time we met was I was bodyguard to the GOC in Northern Ireland. And he'd gone to Springfield Road because it kicked off to visit the troops, don't you know? 
a mark, a rundown from off the roof saying, listen, we've used all the 35 grain. Give me the 45 grain, man. <laughs> and he went back up two boxes. And they fired, that, fired all them in about 10 minutes. Uh, he so was yeah, uh, locked in there for hours. He came to Clue Dog last year. Over to Clue Dog, yeah. yeah. Well, they built the hut there now, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God, a lot of people don't know, Mark Gordon used to be Mark's boss. Did he? Yeah. Ah. He was a chief inspector, Gordon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a nice bloke. A nice bloke. Yeah, I like Mark, yeah. 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 But because uh, he, he, he suffers with Parkinson's. It, well, when I, when I seen him at Clue Dog um, last year, he was terrible, Mark. Well, he, they've changed his medication. Well, he, he 